We say we're your first alert weather team. That's our promise to you. First alert means we're watching, tracking, forecasting, always. First alert weather on your side. Watch 1226 on your side, wherever you go. From the station that's on your side, this is News 12 at 6 o'clock. The best players in the world getting to practice in while they can. Bryson DeChambeau, former Masters champ Jose Maria Olafabo, Aiken's own Kevin Kisner, all out on the practice range with so many others today. They've been here before, but they all know experience isn't everything at Augusta National, but it does help. 14 hours from now, the shots begin to count. But we begin off the course today. Tiger Woods says he is grateful, grateful for the help, grateful to so many of you after a serious car crash in California back in February. Today, the L.A. County Sheriff's Office says speed is behind that crash. The sheriff says Tiger was going up to 87 miles per hour. They believe he meant to hit the gas, but then hit the brakes, which caused him to go airborne and flip. Tiger won't be charged in that crash. This afternoon, Tiger tweeted how grateful he is to the Good Samaritans who called 911 that day. He also thanked by name the deputy and the paramedic who met him at the scene and got him to a hospital. Chairman Fred Ridley also mentioned Tiger Woods' recovery today at his annual Chairman's News Conference. He said he is greatly missed this week, which is what we're all thinking, but he also put into words what Tiger Woods means to the tournament. Tiger Woods is one of the greatest competitors in the history of all sports, and he is and forever will be a part of the fabric of Augusta National in the Masters Tournament. His presence out here is larger than life, so his absence feels even bigger. He just tweeted this afternoon, I will continue to focus on my recovery and family and thank everyone for the overwhelming support and encouragement I've received. But from what's missing out here to what's coming, Chairman Ridley gave us a sneak peek into what we can expect this year for the viewing experience. As in November, this week's broadcast will feature sweeping drone views and aerial views of the golf course. In addition, we have added a second fly cam at the 12th tee which will provide a unique perspective of Amy Corner. He also announced a new video game they're working on with EA Sports, The Road to the Masters. We believe the attention to detail surrounding the course and our traditions will be world class and will provide new and current fans around the globe with a fun and interactive way to look at Augusta National. It's scheduled to drop ahead of the tournament next year. Something to look forward to playing even when rain clouds keep you off the course. And the chairman also brought up Georgia's recently enacted voting law. Yeah, he did, saying the right to vote is fundamental and that no one should be disadvantaged in exercising that right. We realize that views and opinions on this law differ. There have been calls for boycotts and other punitive measures. Unfortunately, those actions often impose the greatest burdens on the most vulnerable in our society. And in this case, that includes our friends and neighbors here in Augusta, who are the very focus of the positive difference we are trying to make. Chairman Ridley said yesterday's groundbreaking for a $10 million Augusta Community Center is a reminder of how the club can make the biggest impact. The Augusta National, one of the major contributors of that project. While boycotts against major Georgia companies are on hold for now, we are learning there's plans for a protest outside of Augusta National this week. Right now, nothing's set in stone, but organizers say it'll likely happen Sunday. Raises the question where the protests may be held, considering Augusta National owns a lot of the land surrounding the course now. So we'll keep you updated on those plans. Time now for a quick look outside. We're taking Let's toss it out to Anthony Carpino on the putting green for more on what to expect on the course on Thursday. Hey there, Riley. Yeah, so as everyone's heading outdoors for tomorrow, expecting a day of some warmer temperatures, those wind speeds will also be increasing ever so slightly. So let's talk about what we're currently seeing out there as of now. Those winds coming in out of the southeast and pretty much the west, actually, uh, across our area from about 5 to possibly about 10 miles per hour. Now, as we continue on through the day tomorrow, we'll start off the morning with those winds coming in primarily out of the west. But as we go through the afternoon, 
directions, the wind street, uh, speed will be changing and also be increasing just a little bit more, primarily out of the southwest uh, between about 10 to possibly 15 miles per hour. Now, coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to be talking about the chance for some more showers as we go through the rest of this week. Guys, back to you. Anthony, thanks. You know, as we know, any wind at all can change things dramatically at Augusta National yeah. Golf Club. Well, tonight marks the beginning of a mood shift over at the National. When the shots start to count tomorrow, things take a turn for the serious. And as we look ahead to Thursday, tonight our Meredith Anderson takes a look back, remembering one of our own News 12 family members who spent five decades bringing the Masters to you. If this wall could talk, imagine the stories it could tell. That's exactly why Augusta National has a very special relationship to the people who bring those stories alive and share them with the world. On tournament eve, it is a blank page, patiently waiting for the first chapter to be written. There are no computers or video screens or even a single light bulb for that matter. Only change that happens here is by hand. But there is some history behind this iconic scoreboard that you might not know about. And when I say behind, I mean actually behind. It's not a green jacket, but this will do. <laughs> it's good to hear Charles Moody's laugh because he isn't on a platform behind the scoreboard where he spent so many years. He passed away last month at the age of 83. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Charles Moody. For five decades, he was a fixture here at the Masters. And in 2010, Augusta National honored him for his contributions. I got cold chills. Uh, I, I, right now, I'm thinking about it. My arms tingling. I mean, you get something from Billy Payne saying, Dear Charles, I'm sitting there. What have I done? <laughs> By the way, he set up his camera and his own lighting when I interviewed him ahead of his big day. His family was by his side that day, 11 years ago this week. It's so exciting because he gets a book of the recap of the tournament every year, and now his picture's going to be in the book. His name is also etched in this plaque in the press building, near one of his badges also on display. His daughter made him this shadow box of all the others. Mr. Moody was one of the few men behind the camera here in the 1960s, long before the world came. He also worked on the course for CBS, even running a camera in the famed Butler cabin. There's just no words to express how I feel right now. It's just, uh, it's just a great occasion. And on this occasion, the first Masters without Mr. Moody. We'll say a prayer for him down in the Amen Corner. I'll spend a moment peeking behind the scoreboard because we know a part of him will always live on at Augusta National. Mr. Moody is buried in Westover Cemetery, which is so close to Augusta National, the property line almost touches it. No doubt he is looking down on me right now, critiquing the camera shot. Reporting from Augusta National, I'm Meredith Anderson. We spent so many masters working together. We all miss Charlie Moody. The, the only guy I know who had his own name on his own parking place that I got to that oh, show, which is pretty special. Absolutely. Such a great storyteller, too, and just a character who is truly, truly missed. And we hear his voice uh, when we cover the masters every year. So uh, thank you, Meredith Anderson, for that. He also was the director behind the First Baptist Church um, Sunday uh, sermons. The, and their televised church service for, every decades. Day for decades. Everyone in town, you know, has a Mr. Moody story, and uh, we miss just into our newsroom, the latest hour, Aiken Public Safety needs your help finding this man. Have a closer look. Officials say 23-year-old Cannon Richardson last seen this morning around 11.15 over on Greg Highway wearing a blue pullover, khaki pants. If you've seen him or have any information about him, you're asked to call the number on your screen. That is 803-642-7620. Happening right now, Mayor Hardy Davis's Masters Experience. This was previously known as the Mayor's Masters Reception and Gala, but this year everything is all virtual and it's broken into two events. So the Eagle Gala, that just started at 6 o'clock. It celebrates art, culture, and sports. Then on Saturday, there's the Hole in One Music Fest. If you want more details, if you want links to register for all of that, you can head over to WRDW.com or head to our app. While the mayor is keeping things online for now, the state of Georgia is getting ready to lift some COVID restrictions. Starting tomorrow, there will be no statewide ban on those large gatherings and no social distancing rules in restaurants or bars. And already we're starting to see some local plans for a lot of bigger events like the James Brown birthday block party. News 12 Celeste Springer is downtown right in front of the James Brown mural. So Celeste, this party could really open the door for a lot of bigger events in town. Organizers are hopeful that this will be the center stage for a birthday bash for our very own James Brown. The commission
commission already voted on the party, but some commissioners disagree on that choice, and it's for reasons you might not think. Commissioner Jordan Johnson sponsored the block party plan for this stretch of James Brown Boulevard. Because I think that it's time to uh, celebrate the Godfather of Soul in a way that not only would make him proud, but that would make the, the community proud as well. Despite restrictions lifting in Georgia, organizers say they're still enforcing masks and social distancing. Because while we want to celebrate, we want to make sure that our numbers don't spike. We want to make sure that folks' lives aren't at risk either. But others, not fully on board. we got to be fair. Just bottom line, it's about being fair. Wondering why the commission voted yes on a big party while they cast those very votes from home. I don't know how many people will be at the James Brown Bash. It could be 200 people. Plus, yeah, we can't hold a, a commission meeting with about, what, 20-plus people? Though others say there's a difference being outside and spaced out. Folks are able to social distance in an outdoor setting. Folks are able to uh, enjoy uh, the outdoor scenery without having to be close to each other, without having to put themselves at risk of the, of the typical things that will put you at risk of COVID. Both commissioners say they're trying to be safe but fair. And as for the best way to celebrate a very important birthday in a pandemic, well, only time will tell. The sheriff's office has the final say on if this road will be able to be closed for the party. Meanwhile, the organizers tell us that they dropped off all that paperwork this afternoon. And Commissioner McKnight tells us that the commission will vote on April 20th on if they will go back to meetings in person. Big plans brewing downtown. Celeste Springer, thanks so much. We're also hearing from Augusta Transit this evening. Even when restrictions are lifted tomorrow, officials say services will still only be for essential rides. Capacity and social distancing requirements will also stay in place on our buses. Riley. Well, we have seen beautiful weather all week long, but some changes are going to be heading our way the rest of the week. We'll have your first alert forecast next. Plus, millions of dollars on the way to expand Georgia's vaccine rollout. But now that most of us are eligible for the shot, what does that look like? We're asking our local health experts. And an old high school gym coming down after five decades full of memories. But alumni can hold on to a piece forever. Hear how after a quick break. Next year. High school gym standing for more than 15 years is now coming down. This was the scene today over at North Augusta High School, where the gym is on its way out to make room for a brand new practice field for the school's marching band. Yeah, some alumni say it is kind of a bittersweet thing to see these changes from proms to graduations and pep rallies. So many years, a lot has happened inside those walls. You get kind of attached, but now those former students are getting the chance to hold on to a piece of the old gym forever. Our Zana Halliburton explains how. The gym was just kind of like the heart of the school. For Beth Ann Young and so many other former North Augusta High School students, the gym holds special memories, like the iconic ring ceremonies. If you received or purchased a class ring, um, you got to walk through this arch that was shaped like a ring, and your parents or somebody in your family that was important would present the ring to you, and that was, that was a big deal. Chaplin and Sons Clearing and Demolition are in charge of the project, but some of the faces behind the work aren't strangers to the space they're tearing down. We are from North Augusta. We all graduated. I, I did, my dad did, my brother did. And all of our friends are reaching out, as well as people on Facebook, look, looking for bricks and pieces of the gym floor or anything that says North Augusta on it. This is not the first time Chaplin and Sons have torn down parts of a school. They've done several others around the area and make sure the community takes home a keepsake. This is a special area. Um, the kids are close, the families are close, and there's a lot of support from the community. And I think that's, that's great. Beth Ann says a lot of community events were centered around the high school and holds a special place in her heart. Having those experiences and memories that, that made me want to come back to North Augusta. And so when you think about the gym, all of those things just kind of come back to your mind. Reporting in North Augusta, Zaina Halliburton on your side. I think all of us have covered events in that gym over the years, and like they said, from the ring ceremony to the basketball games, a lot of memories for those alumni. Yeah, those yellow you know, jackets. You do. You just get attached, and it's neat that you're able to take some at home. So if you do want to take home some pieces of the gym, you can head to the site during the week from eight to five when the crews are out there. I just love that small town. Yeah, they'll just load a few bricks in the back. You know, yeah, no pomp and circumstance to it. But if you want a piece of the gym, come on by. <laughs> We're going to the gymnasium. Let's have a quick pause in the action here, just to take in some of the beauty out of Augusta National. Those azaleas. 
over on number 10 are just amazing. And taking a look, uh, groundskeeper right there on hole 13. I mean, one of the heroes. I would, I would, if I, if I didn't know what they fertilize with, I would eat off of that grass. Man, Terrell Hatton <laughs> and Danny Willett, they're over on number 13. Looks like they're taking it all in, just waiting for their time up at the tee. But Riley, we just can't, uh, can't imagine how, how nice it's been. Another beautiful sight. Let's give you a live look over the Augusta Canal as we check outside right now. Beautiful evening. A couple of hours of daylight left, Riley. You can tell us exactly how many, but I'll bet you money somebody's on that practice tee swinging the golf club right now. Oh, and one hundred a day we'll see those highs in the upper 70s. Not too bad, Riley. Thanks so much. Nearly $96 million on the way to Georgia to help get more people vaccinated. And tonight, News Channel's Will Rio checks in with our local health officials on where we stand in our rollout and how this new funding will help expand it even more. The lines have been on and off here at the DPH vaccination site all day. Health officials say that this funding from the CDC is crucial in expanding sites like these to areas where people need it most. As people line up and wait their turn for the vaccine, the question is, what's the next phase look like? Health officials say it doesn't include adding more people. I'm really encouraged about where we are. I remain concerned about the misinformation. It's about the fight against the misinformation surrounding the vaccine. When people present the misinformation around the vaccines, it's, it's really unfounded and it's harmful. And, um, and that's what part of what we're working against. Regardless, Georgia is exceeding expectations when it comes to getting shots in arms. I would say we're way further ahead than I ever anticipated we would be at this point. Fifteen percent of people in Georgia have been fully vaccinated and nearly a third have received one dose. I'm very encouraged by, by seeing that happen. Georgia is set to receive nearly $96 million from the CDC to expand COVID programs in the state. A big focus is to get more ethnic and minority groups vaccinated, like the Hispanic and Latino communities here. Some of this funding could go toward those specific issues because the vaccine hesitancy issues, again, in each of these communities is different. In the Black and African American communities, vaccination rates are great. AU says they're glad to be leading the efforts in the CSRA. I'm, I'm very proud of our organization and how we have uh, helped to lead and provide care for the community throughout this crisis. In Augusta, Will Rio, on your side. Well, the buildup is almost complete. The third practice round is coming to an end, and the tournament is about to begin. Mike has the highlights of the past three days coming up. It's a what do women want? Gentlemen, pay attention. Let's get this straight. When your car does all the talking on the first date, there probably won't be a second date. Enough about your fully optimized speakers. Just play some good music, silly. And sorry, but corn dogs, beers, and baseball are not going to get you a home run. See? We're not so complicated. We always respond to the little things. You know, the sparkly things. News 12's coverage of the...